Welcome to uh, this winner announcement show for Fjällräven Polar 2024. During this upcoming uh, 60 plus minutes, we're gonna introduce the 20 winners and we're gonna have a gear showcase with some live shopping opportunities for you. My name is Carl Hårdav Segerstad and I am the global event manager for Fjällräven. And together with me here, I have uh, Sofia Johansson. Most welcome. Thank you so much. So it was about six weeks since we last met here in the studio to introduce you all to the three challenges for Fjällräven Polar application period. Uh, and uh, we've seen over 30,000 applicants. Uh, I think it's about 31,000. Uh, and we've seen so many great examples. Uh, and uh, I know that both you and I, we have seen uh, a lot of inspiration for the upcoming winter and we're really happy about that. But Carl, what more has happened since last we were here? Yeah, it's like you say, Sofia, uh, 31,000 applications for Fjallrev and Polar. It's completely mind blowing. And uh, I realize that for many of you watching now, having high hopes for yourself, you might feel a little bit discouraged that like, how on earth am I going to get through through 31,000 applications? And uh, winning uh, a spot at Fjellar and Polar is of course uh, a driving force for a lot of people. But what I really want to emphasize, what we have seen is the fantastic creativity, the inspiration, the, the willingness to, to, you know, challenge yourself to, to think more about how to approach outdoors during the winter time. So I'm super proud also of all the applications and that uh, people have shown so much uh, passion and uh, thoughtfulness on how to get closer to nature in winter time. And I think that is what we should focus on here. Totally. So, uh, as you said, we had three different challenges. And uh, the first challenge, um, what uh, did you see in that one? Well, we saw a lot of uh, presentations about the local uh, uh, environment and uh, how to uh, uh, obtain an um, outdoor life uh, in a sustainable way. And uh, at least I got a lot of inspiration, a lot of, a lot of beautiful places I really want to visit, uh, both in winter but also in other seasons. Well, we asked about your local home turf. What does it mean to you? And, uh, I think that's so many fantastic places. I mean, a lot of people live in spectacular places close to great areas for outdoor life, but, but most people live close to cities and they've you really highlighted their local home ground and what it means to them and explained that it is important to them. And I, I think that is beautiful. Uh, what does your home turf look like? Well, uh, I live in uh, Stockholm, uh, at least part-time, uh, and uh, I live in the middle of the city. But I also make sure to, uh, to spend a lot of time outdoors. And I think uh, even though I'm in the city, I can, I can always find, uh, find the nature close. And for me, my best tip in the city is actually to be outdoors on Sunday mornings, because then you can have uh, whatever nature we have in the city almost all by myself. So um, uh, not only the place, but also the timing, I think uh, can make you find great surroundings wherever you are. Yeah, there's some great uh, thinking there behind the timing when you get out. And uh, I mean, I'm also based in Stockholm or right outside. And uh, when I think of timing, I think of seasons. And right now, when we're getting into the cold season for real, uh, when all the water in Stockholm. Stockholm is based on a lot of water. Uh, when that, those waters freeze, you have fantastic opportunities for uh, long distance ice skating on natural ices. So we're going to talk a little bit more about how to plan for activities and uh, with ice skating specifically in mind uh, in the gear showcase that we'll do right after this uh, winner presentation. 
Um, so that was a little bit about uh, the local home turf and the first challenge. Um, I think it's time then to uh, present the first group of winners, right? The first group of five winners. Exactly. So uh, we'll have four presentations of winners and uh, at the end of the show you will have seen all 20 winners for Fjellrev and Polar. But uh, we start with the first five. Here you go. Here are the first five winners joining us on Fjellrev and Polar 2024. Kate Lamb from United Kingdom. Albin Edbom from Sweden. Gabrielle Thomas from United States of America. Daniel Peter Dalicek from Denmark. And Kohei Uemura from Japan. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations to the five first winners. We will make sure to reach out to every one of you. So, after the first challenge came... Challenge number two, of course. And in that challenge, we uh, continued along the road of actual preparation and planning for getting out. We talked about the gear and the products, more specifically how to take care and how to love your gear longer. Um, as, uh, a lot of products uh, require some investment and there are sometimes is a lot of products that you need. You also need to be very careful about your products so that they, they last for a long time for, for a multitude of reasons, of, of course. And uh, we saw fantastic inspiration on older products, inherited products, products uh, bought second-hand, products that are given to next generation, and yeah, just fantastic ways of treating your products in a way so that they last for a long time. That sounds great. But now, first, let's have a look at the next five winners. The next five winners joining us on the expedition are... Samuel Otavio Marcon from Brazil. Ben Morgan from United Kingdom. Diego Campos from Norway. Florencia Traccia from Spain. And Geran Pell from the Netherlands. Congratulations to all of you. Congratulations, the second group of winners now presented. Exciting. Very exciting. Yes. And now we uh, are super proud to introduce a guest in the studio. Most welcome, Martin Axelhed. Thank CEO you. CEO of Fjellreven and managing director for the brand. Uh, what does that mean in practicality? What do you do every day? Yeah, that's a question I ask myself uh, on a regular basis. Uh, what do you do? You think a lot. Uh, you think long term, you think around the corner, you think strategic. Uh, but also in this company, it also means a lot of hands on uh, operational tasks uh, because it is a company which is still very 
entrepreneurial driven where we do a lot on a daily basis together with the leadership team and with uh, the hundreds of employees we are uh, we are very hands on very operative as well you know. So Martin, you've been with Fjällräven for many years and you've also been with Fjällräven Polar for many years. Can you take us back to where it began for your part? Yeah, for my per person part, when it comes to mushing and dog sledding, it goes so far back. So we are talking about December 1976. Uh, I was born 25th of May 1976 and my parents, I was lucky to have parents with great interest. So they brought me on my first dog trip uh, already in December 1976. So I have grown up in on a sled, if you put it that way. Uh, then uh, I was also fortunate to be part of this beautiful company, which has uh, been very active in the northern part of Scandinavia, north of the Arctic Circle, uh, since day one, uh, which means fantastic long light summers, but also very harsh, cold winters. Uh, that means that we have developed products for that environment, but it also means that we have had an idea of bringing people to experience that uh, in a true environment. And the only way and the best way is to do that together with very knowledgeable people from the north and together with the dogs that are carrying us through the wilderness without any impact on Earth. So we have chosen from day one to use dog sleds as the transportation uh, vehicle. Uh, and uh, that has given us a lot of learnings and it has given us a lot of pleasure and excitement over time. Uh, so for me, it has been a natural part uh, of the job to be part of this event that was launched already in 1997. I joined the company in 1997, so it was like exactly the same year. And then I had the chance to also take part uh, as an event manager uh, way back in time and uh, have seen the event both from the outside, but also very much from the inside and participating um, on the different uh, developments we have done uh, over years. This is the personal polar box. How to, to clothe in the right way and put on the hood again. Vi står vid number one. Det här med lägenheten till att de kommer ut på fjället. Den utvecklingen. Så, vad har det hänt till the company over time then? Both like in terms of the people that we educate and inspire, but also for, for the development of the products uh, from your perspective. Uh, first of all, very important, the people that has participated uh, since 1997 has of course carried a very important uh, uh, responsibility. They have brought home, regardless of origin, they have brought home a lot of experience where they have, as I know, uh, also inspired a lot of their friends and families. Uh, they have educated people uh, because what they learn is to really dress and prepare and act responsible, but also in a way that creates comfort regardless of temperature, wind and weather. And this is the one of the harshest places on Earth. Yeah. North of the Polar Arctic Circle is really tough and can be very tough. But if you if you do that with the right, you know, equipment, but most important, right uh, knowledge, then it becomes comfortable as, as well. So that, I think it has meant a lot to a lot of people, very few that has participated, but in the network of those people, I think a lot of people have learned from them uh, how to, to act and, uh, and, and deal with the conditions and the elements. Uh, from a company perspective, uh, we have year after year shown that regardless of your background, you can actually do this. And I'm extremely proud, you know, working with this company, having all those people with so much experience, so we can bring people into that very tough environment in a safe mode and bring them through hundreds of kilometers of untouched wilderness and then coming out as great outdoor people with great experience from the Arctic circuit in sub-Arctic environment. That's, that's something unique. Yeah. So for the company, we are constantly developing that, but we are, I mean, we, we, are, we are very proud of being such a company that can manage that. 
together with that, we always bring product development into the to, to the uh, process. We bring uh, colleagues into the onboard new members of the company that uh, we bring out in different uh, programs uh, in connection to to this event. Uh, so it is much more than just uh, an event for for for, for uh, the brand. It's it's something that we build the entire like company on. And then finally, it has also been a fantastic thing to bring with us to new territories, to territories across the world, both North America, South America, Asia, southern part of Europe, um, and all our um, uh, countries where we are active in, uh, to show another reality, which is this very, very harsh uh, uh, Nordic environment and the reality that we face when we are out in the wilderness. So a multitude of different reasons and effects and yeah. I think we're going to get back uh, uh, in a little bit about gear and equipment. But before we do that, do you have any personal memories from uh, the years you've been part of the event that you want to share with us? Of course. I mean, first of all, it is. I have been a lot in the Alps. I've been in Alaska. I've been in many in many different mountain ranges across the globe. But this place is so unique. It's not the sharp mountains. It's not the altitude. It's the absolutely untouched environment. It's the distance you see in great weather. It's how short you see in bad weather, and how. Dramatic the nature is because it's so so un, uncivilized. Uh, you don't have any infrastructure. You don't have any cities. You don't have any trains or roads or anything. It's only you and the wilderness. So just being in that environment is super unique, and that gives you, regardless if you come first year or ten or fifteen or twenty years later, you, it's incomparable in my opinion. Then, of course, for me. Meeting so many people over time from so many different nationalities experience this. I mean, every time it's unique. You meet someone from China or from 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 uh, Chile or from uh, uh, I mean U.S. or Italy. Th that that is so strong and emotional. Uh, so I, I have a hard time to really like put my finger on a specific moment, but it is unique to share that with new people and with people that are really having the same feeling I have every time. So that, that's, that's fantastic. Uh, then, of course, very uniquely for me as a person, you, you said that when you introduced me that I'm running this company since a while. And I was appointed CEO 2005. In 2004, uh, I was uh, participating as part of the crew together with our, our founder, Mr. Okinodin. And when we came uh, to a specific checkpoint, he, uh, he said, we need to talk tonight. Uh, so we sat next to each other, uh, actually in, in each a sleeping bag, and just sh shat a little bit. And then he said, now it's time for me to ask you. So will you run the company when the day come? And of course, uh, getting that question, like 300 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle, uh, close to midnight um, in that environment, that means a lot. And the answer was, of course, very easy. Yes, I will. And then it came faster than expected, but already 2005 was, uh, was appointed. So yeah, it has <laughs> many different, very unique um, yeah, meanings to me. Yeah. Uh, right after this uh, winner announcement show, we're going to switch over to a gear presentation show and uh, with the possibility to buy some uh, of our products. Um, do you have any specific uh, winter favorites related to Polar or uh, anything that you would want to share here? Yeah, yeah. The, I mean, we have plenty of great stuff. Uh, many brands has fantastic products in their assortment, but I would probably focus a little bit on the products that are quite uniquely developed for this environment and for mushing or other activities, which is not super high active, but it, it requires both durability, it requires movability, it requires 
uh, versatility. You need to be able to ventilate when that's needed or be very warm when that's needed. Um, and durability is kind of key. Uh, so I would say our polar bibs that are so, I mean, they are probably one of the most heavy duty trousers in the industry and they are built for this environment. They are built for mushing, uh, but can also be used for many other slower paced activities. I love them uh, and you feel safe, you feel comfortable uh, and at the same time you have high movability. So I, I would say that's maybe one of my favorites. And then you, you cannot uh, deny that a balaclava is a favorite with the usage of a gaiter or a neck gaiter or headband or a burglar or whatever. It's a fantastic piece. So, so I, I always have a balaclava in my pockets. It's good, or, uh, good piece of uh, advice, I think, and uh, great uh, insights. Thank you, Martin. Uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for sharing. And uh, now it's time to uh, move over to the presentation of the third group of winners. So uh, stay alert. Here are the next five winners. Here are five more Arctic explorers joining us on the adventure of a lifetime. Karina Sanchez Bazan from Mexico. Roberto Nada from Italy. Lena Haas from Germany. Rock Romy from Slovenia. And Natalie Nemekova from Czech Republic. Great work, guys. Congratulations to you as well. And now we have 15 winners already. And as I said before, we will reach out to all of you lucky winners. And uh, if you have any questions uh, along the event here, you can type them and we will get back to you as soon as we can. But now, Kalle, what was the final and third challenge? Yeah, I mean, it followed a little bit of a pattern. So the third challenge was really who do you bring on a trip and how do you inspire yourself? And with that also your uh, surroundings and the people around you, how, how to inspire yourself and others. And we saw a lot of fantastic uh, inspirational content coming from all applications on uh, whom they would want to bring and how they motivate and inspire themselves. And that's like a super important part of the planning, you know, to find the energy to, to go on your next adventure, I think. And um, staying in that mode is in what, what makes you want to take on the next adventure. So what inspires you to, uh, to take on a new adventure? <clears throat> Um, I mean, I get super stoked on uh, seeing other people thriving in the environment where, where I feel comfortable. I think that is what gives me a lot of energy to, to share uh, and uh, also to, you know, be comfortable outside together with people that I am comfortable with. So uh, I think just about anything gets better when you do it outside you know going out just for a meal and cook and have dinner outside is uh, almost always better than uh, doing it uh, at home i think uh, or going out sleeping in in the woods uh, just a couple of hundred meters away from where i live I, i'm fortunate enough to have the possibility to do that and and that's just fantastic i think so uh, and bring, you know, your family or friends or something. Uh, I think that that is uh, giving me a lot of energy. How about you? 
Uh, well, I agree what you said about the, the thing you're going uh, on different types of uh, adventures mm -hmm. or outdoor activities. And, and I learn a lot, both if I can follow someone that knows yeah. more than I do, then obviously you will learn a lot. But I also find it quite um, interesting if I bring friends with me that have no experience at all. Because then you can feel that you're growing yourself anyway if you learn others. And you will always learn about, you know, if you're in a group, you will learn from everyone's experience. And I think that's the, yeah. the really cool thing about going together with friends. So even though they have more or less experience than you have, in, if you're in a group, you will learn from, from each and one. And I think that's a really, that's a really nice thing about uh, outdoor life and doing it as a group. And that's what we see a lot at Fjellav and Polar as well. I think, you know, people growing together as groups, having to cooperate uh, and with people that they didn't know from before. And uh, in order to stay comfortable, warm, dry and fed, uh, they need to solve a lot of tasks together. And when they do that, they grow a lot. And I think that's beautiful to see. I know. And it's the the time they have it's it's uh, so short but it's so many things they have to learn so they really do have to look at their friends and see what they learn here and there to be able to get the whole puzzle together yeah, yeah. i think that's uh, that's what they realize after a few days yeah that's so, so it becomes so much bigger and stronger when you do it together and i think that's where both you and i obviously find a lot of inspiration for sure so with that said I think it's time to have a look at the final five. The final five winners of Fjellraven and Polar 2024 are... Nikita Deshikan from United States of America. Sanna Ulta Ulila from Finland. Tyler Cohen from Canada. Teresa Flodman from Sweden. And drum roll. The final winner is Yi Yun Cheng from Taiwan. Huge congratulations to all of you. Congratulations to the final five. Uh, thank you so much also to everyone else who applied for Fjellam and Polar 2024. We had so much great inspiration looking at all the applications from this year. And uh, Carl, have you looked at all the applications yourself? As you said, 31,000 applications, it's fantastic, but uh, that's definitely more than one person can do. Uh, then this would not have happened now. So can you tell me about the jury process? We've had more than 80 people going through uh, applications together. So we've had a variety of people looking, a variety of people helping us to select and choose, making sure that we have a wide selection of uh, people being uh, selected and then we also add of course a lot of uh, diversity and group dynamics and uh, trying to find a way to build a group that we hope can work together as a team so that's the, a lot of different uh, aspects that are being weighed into the final selection it's going to be super exciting to meet this team now it is, and uh, we look forward to the future for them and for everybody uh, that applied. Uh, we uh, still have a great uh, show coming up, but before we enter into the gear show, we also have uh, greetings from uh, the participants from 2023. Hello, new Polar team. Hello, this is Katrin. Congratulations. Congratulations on being selected for the Fjallraven Polar. Congrats on your spot for Fjallraven Polar 2024. Yay! 
huge congratulations for all the winners of VR11 Polar 2024. So, you've made it on the VR11 Polar 2024. Now starts the waiting game. Last year, I got a really big boost for my training after the win. You deserve this chance to participate in this expedition. Enjoy. Stay healthy and stay fit before the adventure. Remember to bring home as many memories as possible and enjoy your journey to the Arctic. Welcome to one of the most exclusive clubs in the world and to a new Fjallar and Polar family. Use this trip as motivation to get outside the next few months. And the biggest tip I could give it to you is don't worry because you got the best Fjallar and Polar team to support you and prepare you inside out. So remember to stop and take in the landscape you're in. It's matching there. Super exciting expedition waiting for you guys. In your team of four, work together as a real team. Once you're there, embrace all the ideas given to you and enjoy the moment. If you need any tips, you can always reach out to us alumni. Enjoy the polar journey. I'll give all the dogs a little ear scratch for me, all right? Fantastic greetings from the group of 2023. You remember them? Yes. Yeah, it was a great time. Uh, it's time to uh, close this part of the winter announcement show and I'm gonna get dressed and go outside to uh, prepare for the gear show that we're gonna put on right after this. So I really hope that a lot of you want to follow us along and uh, get some great further inspiration on how to get out uh, during winter time. So it's time for us to say thank you. Thank you to the winners, to all the applicants, of course, also to the jury and to you, Kalle. And thank you. And see you next time.